Um, maybe Akshay wanted to join. He's not here. I think finishing up a conversation. Let's start, okay. Uh, well, um, thank you for joining this breakout session. Um, I I propose today to um, speak about kconfig in Riot, so the migration, the idea, and, um, and the work that is needed, and hopefully um, some design decisions that uh, have been made and should be still be made um, uh, for the mo modeling of uh, game config in Riot. <clears throat> so I will start with uh, the same update that I did on the on the VMA for those who weren't there. I will try to make it that uh, fast. Uh, after that, I will um, talk a little bit about how we are modeling the things that we know on Riot, so configurations, modules, features, etc. And um, yeah, show a little bit of uh, some nice features that kconfig can give us, uh, can give us, and yeah, already gives us, uh, and um, maybe some uh, decisions that I would like some input from you. Uh, so let's start. Okay, a short recap: what we are aiming for in this uh, migration. This is the current state with uh, the optional kconfig. So when we try to compile, we run make all. The dependency resolution is run using the makefile dep files. So that's an, an incremental algorithm that just re-includes the makefile itself until it stabilizes the list. That generates what we call the use module list. It's a list of modules that we are going to compile and the list of features that, um, that we need. Um, the first uh, phase that was proposed for kconfig was to not take care of the module selection, but only the configurations of the modules. So uh, currently one can choose to run kconfig to modify the configurations of the modules that are being used. So if you choose uh, the, the current version, so no kconfig at all, it just uh, takes C flags as inputs and the header file defaults. And with that, it builds. So it creates a Riot build header file uh, and, and compiles directly. When you choose to use kconfig, you can either load configurations through .config files that are in the application, boards, and CPUs, or you can use um, one of the uh, interactive configuration tools like menu config. Uh, with that, you change the parameters. You should only be able to change parameters and modules that you are actually using, and that information comes from the dependency resolution that is done before in make. Uh, that will generate, as usual, the autoconf header file that is injected for every compilation. Um, so the phase one of this uh, migration, as we um, described previously, was the effort consists of uh, identifying the compile time configuration of all our modules. So basically they take, or usually they take the form of a preprocessor, if not dev, and a definition of a default value for a macro. Um, this phase is trying to document that. So we created a Doxygen group for compile configurations and organize a little bit that because it was scattered around. We 
really couldn't see clearly what was going on. Uh, there is a link there. The PR, uh, sorry, the issue 12.888 is tracking the things that are being migrated to kconfig. And there's also a link to the modules that were uh, identified that had compile time configurations. This phase also is trying to model these uh, configurations into kconfig symbols uh, by giving them, yeah, of course, documentation, a type, and when possible, try to add some constraints like range for integers um, and, and the other default values. Uh, so far, we got around 60 drivers, uh, device drivers, and uh, almost all of the um, sys networking modules that have some configuration, uh, especially in GRC, and uh, some packages. There is some ongoing work uh, on the boards on this matter. It's not as big as the uh, modules, uh, system modules. Uh, Alex here uh, started a nice rework on the clock configuration for the nuclear base board, or actually the CN32 uh, base boards. Um, he did a, a, a nice job to, to improve the configurability of these uh, platforms or the clocks of these platforms, and then he um, modeled this in kconfig. Um, and then Gunnar uh, started uh, something similar for the ESP plus uh, Wi-Fi configuration. This is a long phase that we started uh, months ago, and uh, there's still work to do. So, yeah. Uh, help here is, uh, of course, welcome when you're introducing a new driver module or or something of the sort that has compact configurations. Think about uh, adding a K config. Uh, if you have doubts on this, there's documentation, and you can always uh, ping me on GitHub when you have doubts on how to add the K config for the for the module. When we are done with the first phase, we could potentially um get rid of the a lot of defaults from the header files and use the kconfig generated directly so we uh, run kconfig by default and that should generate the same default values as the header files and also allow the user to change them the second phase uh, we split in two milestones the first one was to take all the features, what I call features in Riot of the CPUs, boards, architectures, and model them as kconfig symbols. I will talk a little bit how we did that uh, later. Um, we add symbols to identify CPUs, model line families and architectures. And we added a test that is run on every PR to ensure that we are in synchronization with the make file features because uh, these features are not still used because we have the features that are defined make files uh, that are used for the make file dependency generation, uh, dependency resolution, and oh, I have an echo. Is you? Okay. Um, and we have these features that are used for uh, kconfig. The second milestone that uh, has already started is to model the modules uh, and, of course, packages of, uh, of Riot in kconfig symbols. Uh, this entails. Um, defining documentation, defining dependencies, and uh, sensible defaults for them so we don't have bloated to uh, write the .config files for default configurations that we have. So basically, the idea is that you can run the uh, configure, uh, with a default configuration just like you run with the normal make file currently. So all the modules that are needed for their application are pulled in. Um, for testing that we have, we are synchronized with the makefile um, system, we added a test to check the binaries on a selected pair of application boards that is run on Murdoch on every PR. Um, we are going to increment that uh, list as we move on with the migration. So by the end of this migration, we can uh, select whether we want to use the use module from the dependency resolution in make file or from kconfig, and they should be the same. So basically, they should produce the same binaries. Um, plus, kconfig should produce the um, the configurations, uh, the configuration parameters. And lastly, the the phase three. Uh, is the part where we try to finish integrating this to the build system. So we need to uh, modify the Python scripts that we are using for kconfig to um, basically implement the, the, 
make commands that the CI and testing use, for instance, the board supported by checking that all dependencies are there, features missing, and etc. And then we could um, switch to, to gateconfig as default and use that dependency modeling and configuration system. Uh, so it could look like that. We get rid of the both two parts and use modules and uh, autoconf. Actually, use modules is basically uh, defined in autoconf and uh, dot config file that the use the build system can can include. Um, and from there we can build. So, um, yeah, some advanced features of uh, kconfig. So things that uh, this brings to Riot. I talked a little bit about this yesterday, but we have um, in the in PR fourteen six five four Cenk introduced as Linux the incremental compilation. So we modify a little bit the fix step script that takes dependency files and and injects some dependency on dummy header files that are attached by kconfig when configuration parameters are modified. That means that you have an object file uh, that, and it should be only recompiled when a configuration that is relevant to that object file uh, is modified. Um, so that allows us to reduce the time uh, when iterating over different configurations, the compilation time. Um, the idea here is pretty simple. The, um, the file, um, the script basically scans the C file for configuration parameters and injects, uh, based on the name of the parameter, a path to a dummy header file that is uh, generated by kconfig and touched every time that particular symbol is changed. It's a nice trick. Um, there was an issue by uh, Mirror64 that uh, suggested having some sort of um, environments for testing applications. So you can have one test application and change parameters on that test application. And I thought, OK, well, maybe we can try to do this well with kconfig. I have um, um, a branch where that, that's kind of possible. Maybe we just, uh, I, will, I will open an, an issue to show a little bit the idea, but uh, still, it's a uh, Kind of proof of concept. Uh, what we can do here is have multiple uh, config files that would be our um, environments or our conditions, and um, and uh, from there the CI can iterate over those, compile uh, the application, applying uh, every single of those configuration files, <clears throat> and considering that uh, we have this incremental build. Uh, it shouldn't take as long as compiling everything from scratch because uh, it will only try to recompile the object files that uh, are needed for the configurations that changed. Um, we observe that uh, there are some test applications that could leverage on this because, for instance, you have a test application that tests a driver on its basic form and then tests the same driver with uh, an advanced form uh, with a little bit of um, modifying the code uh, you can ha you can merge that into the same um, application with two different configuration files. So in one you have the basic driver, and the other one you enable the advanced features. And there you should be able to reduce uh, the CI build time by just changing configurations and merging applications. That would be cool. Um, this is something that uh, has been discussed a little bit between some maintainers. Um, with gateconfig, it's uh, pretty straightforward to provide uh, features by modules and packages, not only CPUs and boards, because of the model we are using to 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 provide features. Basically, there are uh, non-visible symbols that are selected when this type of feature uh, is provided. There basically are kind of flags to show that a condition is met. For instance, some hardware is supported, uh, so that should be easier than. Um, in the current build system and should enable uh, some more advanced configuration and dependency modeling. And lastly, yeah, well, kconfig is made for configuration, so we can have some advanced configuration uh, of, um, of modules. We can use ranges and choices to define what the user can uh, select, can can assign to a, uh, a value. For instance, in the clock configuration, you can have the multiplier and the divider of the PLL. They have ranges, and uh, you can 
for instance, uh, only show those values when the particular configuration is being selected by the user or default to another one without being able to touch the, the value when another configuration is used. Um, also, we can use these features that I mentioned before that can indicate that a hardware capability is supported or that a certain capability through an API, for instance, is provided by some module or package. And this would allow us to just directly, for instance, if we have hardware acceleration for, I don't know, crypto operations, we could default to that because we know that the feature is selected. Um, if the, the a driver that also provides this, but it's not a peripheral driver, um, uh, is present in the in the build. It can also be selected by default. I will show a little bit uh, this example later, so we we can see how it works. But basically, it's a choice that is extended on multiple files, and we play a little bit with the defaults uh, to select the the module that we want to compile. Um, so I will now like to start with a uh, modeling K config. So how we are doing these things? Uh, as I said, features are basically Boolean symbols that are non-visible, so basically they don't have prop, uh, a prompt, but they have a help string, so we know what's going on, what it means to have that symbol, and they are selected. There's uh, no major issue in selecting these type of symbols because they are not visible. Um, they're selected by the provider, basically, which usually would be uh, something related to the hardware, like the CPU model or the architecture. For instance, in this uh, example, I am saying, okay, all some zeros, uh, CPUs will provide the, um, we allow to, to change the, the, the mode or to configure the mode of the UR peripheral. Um, and also King config allows to make the selection conditional. So we can add uh, here in the select um, a condition in which this is true, basically. Um, so it's pretty versatile. Um, Modules and packages are also Boolean symbols, but uh, most of times are visible. So they have a prompt that means that the user can configure them. Uh, they may or may not have dependencies, and those dependencies can be, for instance, a CPU, a CPU family, a model, a hardware feature like having hardware random number generation, or even other modules that they depend on because they have to call them on the on the C file, and um, we can also apply different defaults conditionally. So we can add conditions to the, to the defaults. We can say, okay, only enable this module by default if we have this other module or if this condition is met. Um, for instance, here I show the module of the peripheral driver for the ADC. This of course depends on that the platform we are compiling for has an actual ADC. So it depends on that feature has perif ADC and we'll select a module perif common, which is basically something that is um, that is some com common code for the for the peripheral that should be always there when at least some peripheral is being used. Um, there's something on the chat. Yes, I remember the discussion on the K-Config announcement years ago. Work done. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, um, yeah, and for instance, this uh, the um, Auto initialization that we have in Riot uh, is split for every peripheral. And here we have, okay, one module that provides this functionality, it will default to yes, but it depends on both things. So it depends on the ADC being there because it doesn't make sense to auto initialize a module that is not there. And we will depend on uh, having the, the perif init module there, which in the end depends on auto init. Uh, and as a current build system, it depend, uh, defaults to yes, but the user can always turn that off. So we don't, if we don't want to auto initialize the ADC. Um, configuration parameters. Uh, well, these are a little bit more. Uh, they're different than the than the modules and features because they can be of multiple types. They can be booleans, but they can also be strings, integers, or hexadecimal. Um, most of the times, they are associated to a module or package, a CPU or a board, and they can also be provided by the applications. So the application can add a kconfig, like we have in the test kconfig, uh, and we could directly configure the, our test application or example uh, using kconfig just by defining those configurations there. Um, 
we can use multiple defaults uh, on the parameters and even conditionals. If we can see here, this is taken from a PR from Alex, uh, where he was um, modeling the PLL uh, for the SCN32. And here you can see that we have the M and the N. And he defaults to uh, 6 when the board has this, uh, this HSE uh, feature, but defaults to 5 when it doesn't. And it also defines a range for this uh, for this value. It's also worth noticing that um, this value is not feasible, so the user can't select it uh, when when the use clock PLL uh, symbol is not there. We can see that from the first line, uh, with, which has a prompt. This means that when that symbol, uh, so this condition is not true, the prompt is gone. The symbol is still there and we default to whatever is going to default. So if the board has this feature, it will default to six. If not, it will default to five, but the user can't change it. Uh, when the PLL is selected, the user could change that. And this was particularly because uh, of the form of the clock initialization. The macro should always be defined. Um, Alex? I have yeah, I have one question. Um, is it possible to, uh, to, to define a default? uh with with a condition that is um here it's a, it's a boolean i mean the board as hc is a, is a boolean yeah. but could it be that we we are testing against a value like uh if, if um, yes you can you can test I for instance, tried that, a string yeah. you, you should you should be able for instance the symbol um the symbols for uh, checking which uh, OS we are using on native is testing against a screen, uh, string. So it tests, for instance, the environmental variable OS against Linux in, in quotes. So you can do also that type of um, of things. And I think, yeah, it's possible to to also test against uh, integers uh, here. OK. Yep. Um, yeah, and the same goes for the end value, uh, which has a default that we apply uh, when the prompt is not feasible and also applies a range. Um, there has been some discussion how we want to model this in Riot, not only in Gothic, but in general. Uh, we have a lot of APIs that may have multiple implementations on the backend. So frontend is the API and backend is implementation. And that can change because of the network stack that we are using, the hardware acceleration that we have, uh, the drivers that we have. So um, the idea here, what I propose for this type of um, configurations or modeling these type of uh, situations is to, is to use uh, choices with multiple options. So basically choices is the way that Kconfig has to, uh, when it's Boolean, to define um, mutually exclusive uh, symbols. So we can only select one. Um, the defaults can depend on features or other symbols. So basically we can say, okay, try to default to the uh, hardware acceleration peripheral for the crypto uh, when it's there. Uh, if not, okay, try to find some driver. If there is no driver, okay, uh, fall back to the software implementation. Uh, but we can play with the order and the conditions on the defaults to try to uh, optimize the configurations here on, the, on choosing the implementers or the implementations. Um, I will show how we can extend these choices from other files. And what is interesting also is that um, we can, I will show this in the example, uh, have parameters. So configurations are only applied for um, a particular uh, backend. So I don't know, we have uh, AES crypto API. Okay, we want to enable that and then we select uh, for instance, the peripheral implementation because our hardware supports that, but the implementation presents some configurations that are not present for the software implementation, which is natural because yeah, it's a different code and you might have certain optimizations that you can make on that uh, module. You can also do it directly uh, uh, on the choice. So instead of using a config boolean for that choice, you can use a menu config and menu config will show that as, uh, as a menu and an option. So both things. Uh, basically, the takeaway here is that we want to use one symbol for the API module and one symbol to select the implementer. And uh, when we can, try to use choices because it's uh, the logical, the logical uh, way of modeling this uh, mutual exclusivity that um, symbols have. 
Um, here's an example of crypto, for instance. Uh, we have one symbol that is crypto AES. So when we want to enable AES uh, basic support, we want to set this symbol, which will uh, enable the choice inside with that uh, selects implementation. So we have the crypto AES, it's the API basically, and then the implementation, um, it will depend on the menu config up there and it will try to default to the peripheral implementation. So that's the most generic things that we have, a software implementation, a peripheral implementation. But if we see there, the mod perif crypto AES, which is the hardware accelerated implementation of AES, will depend on how we're having that hardware feature there. The software doesn't have that uh, constraint because it doesn't need the hardware acceleration. And if we see here on the right, there is, for instance, the crypto outlift library, which is a package in Riot that is um, a driver for a microchip uh, crypto chip um, that by using the same symbol, if you can see the crypto AES implementation on a different file, we can extend the choice to add this module. Uh, so the crypto outlift AES is basically the code that allows when the package is present to implement the AES, uh, the Riot AES API. And that of course will depend on the package being there. Uh, so when the package is there, we go to the crypto menu and we see that we have three options. Imagine if we have a very full uh, hardware there, uh, we could have up to three options or, well, okay, if the uh, uh, configuration of our CPU doesn't have the hardware there, but only has the microchip, it will show the software and the microchip driver. And another thing to notice here is that instead of having a config, the crypto auth AES symbol has a menu config and a little bit down, you can see some uh, use, for instance, a Boolean option or to use some buffer or whatever configuration that the crypto is uh, needs that depends on that symbol. And when we open the menu config implement um, configuration, it will show that as an option and as a menu. So we enable that option and then we can go inside and change the parameters for that implementation. Um, Peripheral driver configurations. We talked a little bit with Francisco about this. So what we, uh, was the best way to model or to show configurations of peripheral drivers that are particular to uh, a platform. So we have peripheral drivers that we access through a common API and we have some common configurations for that. So basically they apply to all or most of all uh, peripheral drivers, but then we also have particular uh, configurations for the different drivers. And we want to show that in the correct place. Uh, what was proposed here is to follow a convention on the file um, path. So basically we can see on the left that we have the, the symbol for the configuring the peripheral, the timer peripheral. And then we have an optional uh, inclusion of another uh, file that uses the CPU as part of the path. So if the particular platform presents a kconfig.timer on that path, it will be brought in and inserted in that place. So we did that for the EFM32 boards, which had some uh, special configuration for the timer, basically to select the low energy timer for uh, X timer. And that only shows up on the EFM32. That's why it depends on the EFM32 being there and X timer being there. Uh, that's basically just a convention to to show the configurations in the correct place and not in a CPU particular uh, menu under menu config, just uh, to help a little bit the, the user to find that and make it a little bit more intuitive. And uh, finally, uh, I've been trying to tackle this for a while and yeah, I want some input on this. Uh, we have this thing on features conflicting in Riot, which is uh, used a couple of times, mostly for uh, peripheral drivers and mostly for RTT and RTC, which are in many platforms, mutually exclusive modules. Um, there is some uh, SCN32 disco that has some uh, ping conflicts and we're using that feature as well. But basically what we want to do with the current build system here is to uh, specify that two features cannot be used in the same build, so they are conflicting. And what we do, we have a list of them, 
um, in a special format and a list of messages that uh, will pop up when that condition is met. Um, so how to do this in kconfig? Well, as I mentioned, the mutual exclusion is usually modeled as choices in kconfig, uh, but we can't do this in, in this case because we don't know uh, a priori which uh, symbols are the ones that are going to conflict or that may potentially conflict. So we can't do uh, this for every pair of uh, peripherals or something like that. Um, so also depends on the platform. And one uh, idea that I was trying was to have some error conflict symbol, which is, yeah, of course, uh, just a convention. Um, that can be set to, uh, in, this case, in this case, a string, and can be set to a default uh, per um, board or per CPU or per application um, when a certain condition is met. So for instance, yeah, when you go to the sum zero, uh, the sum zero k config will extend this uh, symbol. So the upper definition is uh, global, and the one in uh, the lower one is particularly for the sum zero k config. Uh, basically, this says, okay, we will default this symbol to this message, which says that we can't use the RTT and the RTC at the same time when we are using uh, CPU common sum zero and when we are using the rtt and the rtc modules at the same time basically then we can check for this symbol uh in the in our python script that parses uh, that uh, interacts with kconfig and throw um, an error message when the condition is made um, of course the best way or the more intuitive way for a user would be to go to peripheral drivers and see an option between rtt and rtc because you know that for that platform yeah, they are mutually exclusive one but, question. Yes. Yeah, one question. Uh, the uh, the specified uh, error conflict config. Uh, you put it in uh, each CPU uh, K config. I mean, it's uh, it's not a global. It's not in a global uh, uh, file. I mean, it can be yeah. So you have two. The definition. The first one that you say the error conflict and the type of the symbol is uh, on a global thing. That's only once, and then you can use it. As many times as you want, so you can extend it even on the same CPU. Imagine you have, uh, yeah, let's let's imagine we have a board that is based on the sum zero, and you have the first uh, constraint that is this one that is for all sum zeros, and then you have on the board level another constraint that says, oh, but you can't uh, either use SPI and UART because they share this pin. Uh, so the the that condition is applied to, so all of the conditions are applied to the symbol, and the only that is true, basically, uh, is the one that is uh, set. So the string, all this we said, will be set uh, when that particular condition is uh, is true. Uh, you can extend this as multiple times as you want, even for the same CPU. So if you have that for some zero RTT and RTC are conflict, but also uh, UART and SPR are conflict, you can define this chunk of code uh, multiple times, and the one that applies is the one that will be set for the for the error. And yes, it's particular. Yeah, you define for every CPU architecture or board. Um, yes. Um, yeah. Well, and uh, this is the the last point that I want to bring about the the design. I've been trying actually to model uh, mutual exclusion in kconfig without using the choices, and I really, really couldn't get it uh, in a way that it's. Uh, uh, versatile enough or flexible enough for us to to use in this use case. Uh, so I think, I mean, basically this is kind of what we do in the make files. We have a condition and a message, and when it's true, we show that and we don't compile. So it's uh, basically the same solution, but using kconfig symbols. Uh, maybe it's not the best uh, or the most intuitive for the user. Of course, it will get a nice error message and we understand what's going on. But of course, the idea will be to say, oh, in this application, in this platform, I can only select this or this and show that's a, that as a choice. Um, yeah, but the problem is that this is really flexible. So this is uh, my proposal for this. And um, yeah, that was uh, kind of what I wanted to show. I wanted to know your opinions on basically uh, what we are doing and how we are modeling things. Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know if we, if you want, we can, uh, would be nice to discuss on this.
Uh, this one you mean? Or? Yeah, uh, I was mentioned that uh, here, but I didn't show any code, but basically it should work the same as uh, CPUs. Case that we are using for this, uh, it's not a feature, but it's a, a way to indicate a condition. And this is for the co op options. So we have um, the gate config model G co op options, uh, configuration options, nano co op configuration options, and then uh, a global co op configurations that apply to any provider of, of co op uh, protocol. And what we are doing there is in order to show those um, those uh, options, as we don't have a module that is playing co-op, we have either T co-op or nano co-op. What we did was uh, define a symbol that is like provides co-op or has co-op support, and that symbol is selected by any co-op provider to which these configurations uh, should apply. It's basically to uh, set the visibility of those configurations when uh, some module that uses a global co-op configuration is present. It doesn't start with has, but it's kind of the same idea. I mean, uh, I see these features not as not only as hardware, but also as uh, as basically flags or conditions under uh, under which you are compiling. We could uh, come up with another name or another prefix uh, for that if people are not comfortable with uh, with that being that way. If we want a clear distinction between what is a condition that is provided by the hardware and what is a condition that is provided by a software module package or or other, any other um, yeah, building conditions. Um, we can discuss that. I mean, I think it's, it's uh, a, a valid point. I mean, um, as, as this is not really extended, I didn't focus on making this distinction, but um, yeah. If there's any other uh, questions, and so maybe one of the, uh, I don't know, I examples. Think we, just one comment. Uh, do you think it would be useful to, to create a pad so we can? Uh, uh, okay. I, I have a question. Um, do you plan to make some uh, deep modification in the make files using uh, the kconfig option, um, like uh, it uh, it is done in the you know in the Linux kernel when you have in the make file uh, obj uh, minus the config parameter 
to enable uh, to enable uh, object file to compile, or do you want to keep to keep the make the, the make file uh, as they are now? So um, we uh, considered at some point uh, trying to see this uh, object yes approach that uh, Linux has, but currently, uh, I mean, we, we did some test on the build system uh, to change the way we compile. We didn't see any um, any improvements on, on speed uh, compared to the way we're doing it now. So um, I believe maybe at this point it's um, it's not necessary. Uh, we of course inject the symbols uh, to make files, so the build system knows the 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 current state. But we don't. Uh, I mean, we are going to. I think for now uh, continue using the use module. Uh, list approach because it has been working and we didn't see any uh, improvements on the object yes as far as I know. Also a short question from my side um, for the last slide. When you talk about the uh, error handling for yeah conflicting features, I like the approach. So it's um, pretty good to give feedback as soon as possible to the user. But I wonder if we can actually encode multiple errors in this uh, error conflict um, symbol. I think it's pretty hard, right, to accumulate. I mean, let's say there are different uh, conflicting conflicting features. It's probably hard to to set the string to yeah to all those errors right no i mean um can okay, you mute uh, i mean basically it's um you just uh extend the symbol with these different defaults and in this case this translates to kconfig as okay uh apply this default only when cpu common sum zero is present and both our these modules are present so you can do this um multiple times under different conditions and the first one that is uh that applies because it's true will be set to the symbol so yeah you can do whatever complex um whatever complex condition that you want there uh with these boolean operations on symbols and as many messages as you want and you can be as yeah uh verbose as you want in this um for multiple uh, conditions on the same platform, different platforms on the different boards on the same platform. Uh, I think it's pretty flexible. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's pretty flexible in this in this matter. Um, of course, it's a it's a convention. We say okay, when this particular symbol is set, we want to stop compiling. But I don't find that really bad. I mean, it's, a, it's just a special symbol that we are defining. I have, I have one question regarding the, um, the configuration and the, the, the C flags uh, thing. So if I understand correctly, now uh, during the migration phase, we keep the possibility to, uh, to define some configuration uh, via uh, the C flags variable. So from the command line or from, from, uh, from, uh, from directly from the make file or probably also uh, to uh, be able, being able to define some constant from a, a, a general header. But it's, as I understand it, so after the, K, the kconfig migration is done, this won't be uh, possible anymore. I mean, uh, or do you think it would make sense to, to keep this, uh, this, this behavior? That is the way. Yeah, I mean, in the autoconf.h, uh, if a symbol is already defined from uh, C flags, then you you don't overwrite it. I mean, you, you, you keep, the, you keep the, the value already set by the developer. Mm. Yeah, the problem with that is um, it, when you try to bypass kconfig, uh, for starters, you lose the uh, incremental uh, build because kconfig has no longer control on which configurations have changed. So you have to go back to always compiling all object files. Um, that's what's happening when we change a C flag. It changes the right build.h and we recompile everything. Yes. Um, and if you allow 
uh, configurations uh, from outside the kconfig uh, infrastructure, then you lose this control of which symbol changed, and um, you can't uh, trust that you can't that you don't have to recompile that object file. So you have to recompile everything. Um, to have something similar, uh, so you mentioned two uh, options. One is uh, modifying the make file of your application. Let's say we usually say cflex plus equal minus the whatever variable, and we set it. Um, Okay, if you want to write a file, then the app config is the, is a place to do it. So you just set directly there. You can do that, and then we also proposed uh, another approach that would be something for the command line interface, which would be having some variable, not Cflux, but something similar that uh, can be taken by the build system and merge into a dot config file. And then inject it to kconfig as, as 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 if you had written a, a, a .config file, basically. Uh, and that way, you always pass through the kconfig. So, it, I mean, that gives you a little bit more uh, first control because you have all the checks, the sanity checks for the values, so the ranges, the dependencies, and the visibility. And you can also still get the um, the incremental builds that we you would lose by injecting C flags uh, if you use the uh, if that's for every value in the output. Um, I don't know how that sounds. I think it's a valid point, and we should discuss a, a good solution for this because I know that a lot of people are really used to just say C flags uh, equal and pass the parameters. Uh, so we don't want to change the whole uh, workflow for everyone. Just try to get it better and to get these uh, use cases, let's say, uh, correctly. I'm trying to take notes. Uh, OK, and also I have another comment. <clears throat> so because I, I, I could get my hands dirty in the, in the STM32K uh, config part. Uh, so, but I, I put it on, on uh, aside now because uh, it's so. I mean, it's very complex to uh, to model the clock configuration uh, in the STM32 because there are a lot of options. And uh, um, but yeah, so the, the first, I, I, I it's it's uh, I appreciate it to to uh, this K config thing because it, it gives you a, a good frame or. Uh, to 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 model things correctly, you you have to do it uh, correctly uh, from the start. Otherwise, it it just doesn't work, and uh, you so you have, really have to think of uh, all the options uh, and how to model them. So that was uh, having this in mind uh, helped, helped helped a lot. Uh, but I I think I I found some maybe some limitations or or maybe I could not find how to 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 do that correctly. So first is that, for example, for the clock still, uh, you have this high speed external clock. So you can easily say, okay, with a Boolean, there is an, ex an external high speed clock. Uh, that's, that's easy, but you cannot really say uh, the value of it. I mean, the value can be in a range of to, from four to, to 48 megahertz, for example. It's some, some just, but most of the nucleo have eight megahertz external uh, high speed clock. But sometimes it's, it's 25 megahertz, sometimes it's 16 megahertz, sometimes it's something else. So it's it's very difficult to to give good defaults with with something which is uh, uh, which is which is not uh, always the same. I'm not sure if it's clear. So you you can you can use conditional to say okay, I will use this default if it's 8 megahertz. I will use this default if it's 16 megahertz. But I would like to use some. I would like to use a a, a computed default based on a value that is changing. So I don't know if it's clear or not, but uh, um, I, I could not find a good solution for this. So you say that um, besides the, having the high speed uh, external oscillator, you want to also set the value for it and change the parameters. Um, yeah, of the PLL, for example. The, 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 I would like to find uh, good PLL values depending on the high speed external. This way, it's completely automatic. But mm. maybe I would like to. It's too. Uh, uh, it's too ambitious. No, I think it's. Um, I mean, it's possible. Of course, it's. Uh, as I understand, 
having uh, the external oscillator is not a configuration, so it's just a symbol that you select like you did on the PR, yeah. and then the value of it also it's not configurable. I mean, it's uh, it's set by the board, so that's not a configuration. Uh, all those things the user can't see, so you just set uh, use defaults uh, for that. That uh, should be pretty safe. And then you can use, the, uh, I think you asked about these uh, conditions for the defaults. Uh, I guess you could also, uh, like you did here, default six if there is uh, no external oscillator, but then you can uh, define different defaults for different values of the external oscillator frequency. Um, of course, this, uh, so KConfig okay, doesn't have any uh, arithmetic operations. Uh, yeah. What it has is um, um, a macro language uh, from which you can call shell things if you had, um, I don't know, maybe this is getting a little bit complex, but you can make some script or something to calculate these things uh, and then changes the defaults. It would be better to just do it with uh, kconfig symbols logic, but mm. I think that's also something that- Yeah, could that, would be, that would be, if only using uh, kconfig symbol would be, uh, I think it would be, uh, very very verbose i mean you you have to mm -hmm. you have to put a, a default for each possible value and it's uh, i think it's just uh, not not scalable but yes yep. okay and, yeah and the second thing is um still regarding stm32 it's about the, the cpu um type so now we say in the in the make file features file that we we are using this model of cpu so it's with a long, long name, but there is a command base. But at the end, you have two letters telling, telling you uh, the number of pins, the, the RAM, uh, the amount of RAM and the amount of, of, of flash. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that uh, the, the combination, the, it's, the combinatory is, is just huge, but you can still uh, focus on the CPU line. So we have this, this notion of CPU lines, STM32. Um, so I was wondering how we could model this efficiently. So my, my idea is for now is to, to let the board define the CPU model mm -hmm. and then in the, and in the CPU model configured to select the, the corresponding line, but in the STM32 CPUs, we only uh, describe the, the lines and not the models. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense or would, do you think it would make sense? That would, so that you are, we are but you're moving uh so you move the responsibility of uh saying the number of pins to the board to selecting the correct number of pins yeah because uh, the, the board the knows the, the the kind of chip that that that's put on, on on the board and there is also the question of uh, how to compute the cpu line i mean the cpu line is computed uh, there is an algorithm written in make mm -hmm. um i don't know how to efficiently do that in, uh, I mean, I, I see how to do that in Kai config, but I think it would be super verbose, hmm. more verbose than the logic we have in, in make. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, for the computing part, yeah, I mean, either it's full declarative or you start bringing some external uh, scripts that like I mentioned, which, well, I mean, we can evaluate if it makes sense for this uh, type of thing so we don't get massive K configs. I mean, I don't know, I can give my opinion, which is basically I like things uh, um, being explicit and and, uh, and and declarative, even when they might be uh, verbose. But I know that there's a lot of people with valid arguments that don't like this in Riot. Uh, so I think basically this is, for instance, a, a point that we that we should discuss, uh, like, uh, where's the trade-off that we want to say, okay, less uh, k-config files or, or smaller k-config files with uh, some logic that might not be so direct, so we don't do everything on the k-config symbols and we do these tricks or external uh, computations uh, against having all the symbols defined. Uh, I think uh, Benjamin uh, did a script, for instance, to generate all the some uh, D21 models, uh, CPU models, because, uh, yeah, he actually wanted to generate that uh, on on the build system. I said that we can't use wildcards in kconfig, so he did this automatically, but yeah, of course, it's a huge file. Um, I find that having all the symbols defined and not introducing this uh, 
environmental variables or external things uh, is a little bit easier for debugging purposes and uh, basically tracing down where the things come from uh, so we don't lose control like sometimes we end up doing in the current build system. But again, that's my view and I think uh, we should uh, evaluate this, uh, uh, the pro and cons of this, uh, of both approaches and decide uh, on, on an issue. Let's 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 open an issue. I will write this in the path so we can discuss there because uh, yeah, okay. we're running out of time. I think. Uh, ah, someone brought this down. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Akshay, can we have an option to disable range for kconfig symbols that already has a range defined for debugging purposes? Um, I think, if I remember correctly, range uh, attribute doesn't take conditional i can check quickly but i think it doesn't what you can do is uh i think at uh, assign a symbol there um or even environmental variable if you know that you're debugging um but um what would we do that for i mean what's the use case uh, that you're thinking there oh sorry just saw it here. Yeah, range can take uh, conditional, so it will be possible. It will be possible. Uh, I will just copy the language definition. So uh, it's a hand. Yes. Yeah. Don't don't you think it's 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 to um, to answer to to Alexander? Don't you think there should be some default configuration for each board? To define the parameters like the PLL um, configuration, um, I do not see actually some uh, dev config file in a Riot. Maybe I, I miss them, but don't you think it should be a, <coughs> a dev config file uh, for each board that is applied to define these uh, specific parameters, uh, and the default value should be defined for the board and not for uh, the CPU? Yeah, uh, uh, for me, the, the only thing that is changing uh, between boards is the fact that you have uh, uh, an external oscillator or you don't. So high speed or low speed, it's, uh, and the value of this, uh, uh, the value of the external oscillator. So if you say, okay, we can provide the default in the case there is only uh, internal oscillator, then it's, it's very deterministic because you, you know the frequency, you know everything, so you can provide uh, parameters for, uh, I mean, well-known parameters, it will, that will work. But the thing is that if the uh, external oscillator is, uh, is present, then you you have to adapt and uh, and this will depend on the yes. configuration of the board. So, so what, what I mean is that uh, it, it depends on the board, so you can define some uh, default value by board and not by uh, by CPU. I mean, um, uh, for example, if you have the STM thirty two F four hundred forty six, you you can define by default uh, um, an internal oscillator with a, a defined frequency. And uh, uh, if you enable the, the the external oscillator, you can define a, a default over frequency for that uh, for that board. And not relying on the on the CPU uh, CPU uh, configuration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, if it's a nucleo, it's 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 well known. I think you can. Yeah, yeah. I, I have. Uh, yeah. We have to think. Uh, yeah, of it. I would like to move um, uh, the uh, the maximum amount of, of uh, logic for this into the CPU part, so we can reuse it very easily uh, across uh, all boards. I think there are very uh, CPU specific configurations at the board level in STM32 for the clock. I mean, uh, core clock yes. is, <laughs> is defined here, but it's something that is completely uh, deterministic uh, uh, and could be put uh, only at CPU level. Uh, but yeah. I mean, uh, we, we can we can move a lot of defaults to the boards because the boards know which CPU it has and which uh, external oscillator it has. Uh, Francisco pointed out that we are um, running out of time now because the other breakout session is uh, starting, but I think okay. uh, it was pretty productive and uh, we should yeah continue this on some uh, 
um, GitHub issues to point out these uh, problems and uh, to say, well, how we are moving forward with this. Thank you very much for. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for preparing this uh, presentation and, and breakout session. That was very uh, interesting. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.